happy homebrew Wednesday. Um, as you see here, I have my travel mug, or as my wife's travel mug, uh, of coffee in it because I'm filming this on Wednesday morning here in New York City. But if you see here, I have four bottles of beer. I had a friend, some friends over for one of my friend's birthdays. He asked me, you know, if he, because he doesn't live in the neighborhood anymore, um, if he can, you know, have some friends over from that still live in this neighborhood and bring him some epic beers and we celebrate his birthday with him. So, um, the two beers that I contributed were homebrew, because he hadn't tried my stout yet, and luckily more of my friends liked it last night, so it's getting better with age. And then I also contributed this one, which is which I got from Zach from Chain Reaction Brewing Company, which was the Great Divides Peach Grand Cru, which was a little underwhelming for a 12% Belgian beer with peaches added. Uh, it was very one note to me, but again, I love Great Divides beers, and that's why I asked them to send it to me so I could try what they're doing nowadays, especially because these 750 milliliter bottles are are only sold in like Colorado and maybe the surrounding states. So, um, but the beers that he contributed were a 2012 vintage of Deschutes Abyss, which is an imperial stout aged in in oak barrels, bourbon barrels, and wine barrels. Uh, which was really nice. The, the the molasses they add adds a really nice flavor. The one you know caveat I have with this beer is that since only part of it is aged in bourbon barrels, it doesn't have as much bourbon character after a year of age as maybe some other bourbon barrel aged stouts like Parabola from Firestone Walker would have. And then the last the other beer he bought, which was which was awesome, and I knew it would be good because I've had it before. Is Lolita from Goose Island, which is really cool that they started putting it in these big bottles. They're actually 765 milliliter bottles instead of 750s. So if I can get a regular cap back on this, you know, if maybe I'll save the bottle. If I could put a normal beer cap on it, maybe I'll, uh, I'll may I make a Belgian beer. I'll put like a bottle, like the bottle, a bottle like this, and just age it. But it's a sour ale with raspberries, and it's just really, really nice at 8.7 ABV. It was really nice. So this one was like, this is like 10%. This is 12%. This is like, this one is almost 9%. So um, I'm probably not going to drink so much beer today because, you know, there was a lot of alcohol last night with the high ABV beers. But anyway, um, before we get to some updates... Here I'm going to show you off to some footage um, of my temperature controlled fridge which is now finished. Some of you might already know that because I posted pictures in the Bubbles and Chalk Facebook group um, and, or I sent pictures to some people via Facebook chat. But um, here's that footage. Enjoy. Hey Brewtubers, so I'm shooting this little clip for Homebrew Wednesday um, about my temperature controller. Um, and, you know, I talked about it last week. I did get a friend who is like, basically a jack of all trades. He's in real estate professionally, but he's one of those guys who knows his way around electronics and handiwork with all different tools. So instead of me, the noob, you know, to doing stuff like this, trying to, you know, work on like making holes in the box and doing all the stuff that's needed to make, you know, a controller like this, as you see here. I had him basically do it for me, you know, get the electrical wiring, and all I did was buy the, you know, buy the box and the controller, and then he basically filled in all the rest, and I just made sure to sit there with him, and if he needed anything, you know, I got it for him. Um, and, you know, I had some tools, he had some tools, you know. So anyway, so as you see here, I have the STC-1000 that everyone talks about in a project box from Radio Shack. I will include a parts list in the description of this video. Um, one thing I will not be doing is post is talking opening it up and showing the wiring because um, I did it we did things a little bit differently um, than the usual you know homebrew talk diagram um, which you can see in a picture here um, and then you know and then wired it up you know, we did things a little differently, and then, you know, wired it up, you know, the rest of the way. So there's only one real big change 
And therefore, since it's working for us, I don't want you guys to try that and then it not work for you. And then you guys can, you know, yell at me for not working. So here's a picture of it quickly. And if you guys can, you know, guess what I did, you know, then, you know, you can go ahead and try it. But otherwise, follow, there's a, you can, I'll give you a link to the Homebrew Talk thread and the picture of the diagram. And uh, you can go from there. But basically what it is, is the SEC 1000 in the project box. Um, and then we installed an outlet on the side because I didn't want to do it in front because I just wanted to have the flexibility of putting it on the side of my fridge and having not all plugs jut out, especially because this plug juts out. So, you know, I'd, I'd rather have it to the side and not facing outwards. Um, some people put extension cords instead of this outlet, but I feel like this is a bit neater. And I know it's white and there's a black box with a gray SDC, but for, you know, because my friend was able to get it for me and he didn't make me pay him back, I didn't, wasn't going to ask for a black one and spend another five bucks for a faceplate. And another thing, one thing I will probably do is get him to make me labels that are not pieces of tape for the top outlet be, being cooling and the bottom being heating. Um, so basically, I have coming out from the bottom of the box is the temperature probe, which is the thinner wire, and the thicker wire is the power for everything. Um, so I have that hooked up to an extension cord, which comes into my kitchen and goes into the outlet over there. Um, so I have it set now to 25 degrees Celsius. Um, just because I calibrated that one because when I first did a first test today uh, Before I went out and bought the velcro to secure it to uh, my fridge um, It was around 26 degrees Celsius in the fridge, so I uh, that's the way I did it um, and uh, Yeah, so once it gets down and shuts off um, And I conclude this quick test. I'll show you you know what I did inside the fridge itself and we'll go from there cheers alright guys so we're at 25.1 degrees um, it's taking a while to cool it down but that's only really because I haven't calibrated it yet calibrated the probe yet and it's just sticking into the fridge not like it's sticking into something like a glass of water or you know taped onto the fermenter so we're just waiting for it to get down to 25 and it should switch off. All right guys, so as you see, it just, it's down to just switch to 25 degrees and shut down the fridge, the compressor on the fridge. So right now, I have duct tape closing the fridge. If you guys can give me some advice of a better way to keep it closed after removing the shelves from the fridge. I'd like to know that. Um, but let's go inside the fridge, <laughs> unsticking the tape, obviously. And uh, right now, as before, I tried doing a test with taping it to the fermenter, but it didn't really work. But we'll get back to that in, a, in another video. But as you see here, I with the glass shelf, I reinforced it with a piece of plywood to make sure that it would support a six gallon carboy, six gallon better bottle carboy, um, and not fall when it's full. So this one has about five gallons of water in it, and, it's not, and as you see, it's not really bowing, you're not bending down at all. Um, so my goal for to actually, as you see here, there's not much headspace, sorry about there not being so much light right now but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bung in and I'm going to order I found online a a plastic or nylon elbow so with two barbed ends so one end will go one end of the 90 degree elbow will go into the bung the solid bung which even if I have to drill it out a little bit I will to fit it in and then it'll basically go up and over and then I'll attach whatever hosing I have and put a blow-off tube jar right over here so um, so it should be you know sort of work that way so the only thing I really have to still figure out 
is again how to keep it closed and when I'm not putting this in um, or a big bucket then I could fit a five gallon better bottle secondary or some smaller fermenters in there without having to use the shelf so overall it's pretty good um, again as you see here all the stickers from my old beer fridge um, which I hope to add more stickers to and really you know deck out the fridge that's my new temperature controlled fridge if you guys have any questions I'll ask them answer them but again I'm not going to really answer so many questions about the wiring because there's a lot of videos about the method I used and I really don't want to cause you guys to make any mistakes if you follow the few things that I did differently so I will again post links below and one more link I will post is to the main video that from YouTube that's ready on YouTube that inspired me doing it with this outlet instead of more extension cords coming out for heating and cooling alright cheers alright so as you see it's up and running I did some tests you know I still have to calibrate the temperature probe to make sure it's hundred percent accurate um, one of my friends said I didn't have to calibrate it but then Paul from time for another one said I should just to make sure everything is a-okay before I brew so I'm not going to do so many tests with it in the next few days because I'm not brewing probably until after Thanksgiving at least um, but I'm glad that I was able to get it done fairly quickly after getting it in the mail after getting the controller in the mail from Amazon and uh, and then getting the parts and having a friend help me put it together um, so uh, another update is with the promo video, which many of you have saw. I've gotten some really good feedback on it. I'm really glad you all enjoyed it. Um, it was a lot of fun compiling all the videos, downloading which ones I wanted to put in the video, making a cool collage in the beginning to show just how many people are, have joined the community since SJ4 started it in 2011. Um, but after thinking about it and talking to some people, there's one clip. Um, that I might want to switch out for another clip just to make the storyline a little smoother so that's why I've asked on Facebook um, some other you know people in the brewing, in the YouTube home brewing community to make intro videos like so many of you have and yes thank you again for all the people who have made um, intro videos and I want everyone, everyone, even if you haven't, it's not too late. Because one of my plans is after I post the final cut of the video, which I should be posting once I get the clip that I see it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's the one I want to use. Um, once I'm done with that and I post the final cut of the promotional video, I'm gonna be trying to my, I'm gonna try to take all the videos and like group them by location. I actually got this idea from Bobby Mayer, who's a great uh, homebrewer on YouTube, uh, I'll put a link to her channel below. Uh, she said to group it by location, so like some Canadian brewers, New Zealand brewers, is UK brewers, American brewers. If there's enough of those, I'll do it by region in America, um, and uh, so that you know everyone can, even if you're not subscribed to every channel that made a intro video, this will, it'll be a good way. For me to help you guys get aware of just how many channels are out there, so when I edit it together, I'll put the name of the channel with the person as they, in I mean, with the video as the person introduces themselves, so you'll know what their channel name is um, if they don't already mention it in the video. So that's the plans. I think that so for the new equipment that I'm planning on getting. Um, I might have mentioned it before, but I want to get some smaller fermenters, like three gallon, a couple three gallon better bottles, maybe some one gallon fermenters. I definitely want to get a stir plate. Um, so in terms of my next brew, I, I'm, I haven't made an official decision yet, but I think I want to brew an English barley wine. Just it might not, it might not be ready like taste wise till towards like the end of the winter or. You know, till the, like, you know, maybe if I brew it, you know, the beginning of December, it probably won't be ready till, I don't know, till the end of January or something, what to, to, to at least try. Um, so, so what, what, what I'm going to do to help speed up that process 
is if I do end up getting two three gallon better bottles, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ferment the whole batch in in a one big carboy or better bottle, my six gallon better bottle, and then I'm gonna split it up into two. One, I'm just gonna age as a normal secondary with nothing added, and one, I'll age on bourbon soaked oak chips. So even if I bottle them all at the same time, both three gallon batches, um, the one with bourbon soaked oak chips is gonna have a big bourbon flavor to start. So it's gonna need time to really balance out while the one with nothing in it will just be just a straightforward English barley wine which I'll be able to you know sip and see how the alcohol or whatever flavors that are up front mellow out and blend into the overall flavor profile a little bit quicker so that's an idea and then once those you know once we, you know so once I get that going um, I'll be I'll see how often I'm gonna brew but yet I'm not planning on going to kegging anytime soon because I'm really trying to be frugal with my purchases and use as much gift, holiday gift money for what I want to buy as possible. So right now for my drinking habits and my wallet, bottling is perfectly fine for me even though there are some you know annoying parts about bottling day and you know with all the sanitation and this and that but overall I think Bottling is the best way for me to number one share my brews with other people and uh, Also make sure that I'm not you know spending too much on homebrewing from the start So that's all I have for now. Happy homebrew Wednesday. I'll cheers you with my Folk mug of coffee, which I'll drink now to wake myself up after a good night of drinking last night I, feel, uh, I want to wish you all in America uh, and If you're celebrating abroad like Tony Yates, maybe a happy Thanksgiving a happy, you know, whether if you're not celebrating American Thanksgiving, then I guess have a great rest of your week and a great, you know, next few weeks prepping for the holiday season. My holiday season as a Jew is coming up right now, basically, because Hanukkah starts tonight, Wednesday night. So, cheers to you guys, happy holidays, and I hope to share a lot more homebrewing adventures with you in the coming weeks. Cheers.